time when you were on the road and you just laid yourself on the road. Can you just take us there for a bit? Yes, I remember that time like it was yesterday. Um, I remember I had to go to a special school, right? Because they're saying that I wasn't <laughs> meeting the standards of the school and they're saying that I was diagnosed with something called MID, which was, I guess, uh, let me see what it stands for, mild intellectual disorder. And so what they wanted to say was that I couldn't function at the level in the school that they required me to function. So they wanted me to go to a special school. So when I ended up at that special school, you know, and going on, I had what was going on at my house. I was going through a lot of uh, verbal abuse. There's a lot. So at that time when I was going to that school, you know, they had me doing work that you should be doing in like grade three. And I was in grade seven, right? Mm. So I was I was losing it and I felt like I was hopeless. I felt like I was going nowhere in life. So what I started to do was I, I remember I laid myself down in the middle of the road and I was hoping for a car to come and run me over because I felt like my life was invaluable. I didn't serve a purpose on this earth anymore. When you laid yourself on the road and hoping a car would come. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? I was about maybe 13 years old, 12, mm -hmm. 13 years old. And what ha happened? Was it a change of mind? What happened? It was, so you see when I lied down in the road um, and I thought, you know what, this was it. <laughs> That's where a lady came out of nowhere. And I always like to say that she was like the angel in that moment. And she came and got me off the road and she spoke some words of life into me, letting me know that whatever you're going through, it's okay. You're going to make it. This is a, you know, this is just a building block to what's really in front of you and all that stuff. She started giving me like a motivational speech before she just disappeared. And mm. that was memorable for me. And I think that's what really pushed me to be the person that I am today, if I could say that. You know, you and I always talk about how we believe that woman is your angel, that you were yes. meant, I believe you were meant to live, you, you're meant to do greatness. Mm -hmm. Even the book that you and I launched together, 55 Quotes to Greatness, you have so much greatness in you. Thank you. What would you say to anyone your age, a millennial, uh, who's going through something similar? Because I know there's a lot of people uh, on the line who may not have gone through what you've gone through, but have definitely felt something similar. What would you say to someone who is going through that right now? I would say to them to have faith, have faith in something. You know, a lot of reasons why a lot of people feel hopeless is because they lost faith in everything. They lost faith in God. They lost faith in themselves. But, you know, as long as, long as you have at least a little bit of faith mm -hmm. inside of you, this much, you can make it through your day. There's many a times when, you know, I felt like I couldn't make to the day. And, you know, when I was suicidal, um, that was a thought process that you can't make it. But, you know, Nowadays, when I have bad days, I just think, you know, this is just another building block for me to get past. No obstacle can hold me down, you know. So that's what I'll tell anyone right now, that to just keep hopping over those hurdles like you say, boat, you're going to be all right. You know, and I remember there was a time that you were angry with God. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was very angry with God um, with my living circumstances, my living environment. Um, not having a good relationship with anybody in my household. I could even say anybody in my family, really. You know, um, I felt like I felt really alone. I felt like if nobody loved me, no one cared for me. And when you feel that way, as I said, it's like you're in a dark room all by yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. So it almost makes you feel like if you want to go crazy. Yeah. But that's where you... That's where I started to pick up, you know, my pen and my paper and stuff to write and find therapy in that. 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, and what I love is that you're my family. You're my boy. I love you. We always have this safe place. We talk so much. We get, you know, you have us and you're such an inspiration. You're such a fighter. You're always, you always come back strong. I love you so much. Love you. Um, love you.